Anyways, with me on the set is Jeff Wilkie, who represents Kohler Engines. I tell you, you got to have power. Everybody's in the business for power these days. And uh, you guys have really come along with a solution for DPF. For Tier 4, correct. Yep, Tier 4. Correct. Everybody's talking Tier 4 at this convention. And rightly so. I mean, it's mandated. Here we are. It's right. facing us. we got to do it. Right. So what have you folks come up with? We have two brand new engines, a 1.9 liter and a 2.5 liter, that are actually developed from the ground up, brand new, uh, to run clean enough that they don't require a particular trap or a DPF. None so, at all. None at all. So our, our tier four solution is less DPF. Now, and by saying that, by not having DPF, then obviously you don't need any sort of a supplemental uh, fluid for it? Right. Our, our power range is, right. is up to uh, 55.4 kilowatts, okay. so that's right under that emissions level, where it doesn't require SCR or urea, as, as you were referring to. Right. But uh, in most cases, most engines, uh, competitive engines, are using uh, a particulate trap to filter the exhaust to reduce the particulate output, because that's a very stringent requirement for 2013. Anything over 19 kilowatts in the U.S. market Right. has to meet this new emissions requirement. Can I ask how, what what parameters or, or what particularly particular areas of focus you use that would meet EPA regulations on this matter? Uh, we actually had to do several areas. We had to do, as far as exhaust emissions, CO, nitrous oxide, uh, those are all considered sure. as far as that, and as well as particulate matter. So, to meet the new, spe new specifications that are going to happen in 2013. No, does this improve efficiency and yes. operation capacity? Right. We took a, a technical approach, right? Uh, you know, with innovation, and we did it with a high-pressure common rail system, four-valve head. Um, we centrally locate the injectors in the center of the uh, combustion chamber. Uh, a lot of work was done on the uh, the nozzle and the spray pattern. Um, we also use cooled EGR. Uh, as well as turbocharging and a DOC. So you need all those elements in order to get an engine that would run clean enough. And along with that is the engine design itself. The block construction is built as such so that it, it's very rigid and the bore uh, stay round for the life of the product. And hmm. that gives us good oil control because oil consumption is also a contributor Absolutely. To, to particulates. So being able to develop an engine that runs as clean as it does, we need to control that as well. So uh, those were all elements that were considered in the engine design right from the beginning. And that was, you know, our, our intent was to be uh, non-DPF. Because we saw that as a challenge for the, uh, for the end user as well as the OEM. Um, so your question was, does it give us advantages? Right. Yes. Fuel savings, because with electronic fuel injection... I was just going to ask you about fuel savings for the right. potential end user. Is that right. significant? So going from a mechanical injected engine to this... Uh, electronic common rail injection system, you have an, an improvement in fuel economy, as well as the fact we don't have to feed a DPF for regeneration, so we don't have to provide diesel fuel to the uh, DPF for it to regenerate. So there's definitely going to be a savings compared to another engine that would use, say, a particular trap. Does this uh, have any effect on the so-called NVH process, which is noise, vibration, and... Yeah, and harshness. Harshness. Yes. yes, it does definitely. Because we have better control of the combustion process, we can inject up to six times per cycle. Really? Yes. So with doing that, we have, again, control over the combustion process, and so you don't get that pre-ignition knock of what, you, what you're used to hearing in diesel right. engines. They, they're a lot smoother, a lot quieter. We've done a lot of work in our NVH analysis and development of the engine, too. So we got a bed plate structure, so it keeps the block rigid and absorbs some of that noise. We use uh, multiple teeth in the uh, valve train for driving the gears, and so there's a lot of tooth engagement. Uh, that helps reduce noise as well. So yes, there's a lot of elements considered as well as keeping the noise down. So noise savings, or quietness, or, uh, fuel savings, uh, the uh, maintenance intervals will be extended. Because the engine runs cleaner, we have less right. particular contaminants getting into the oil. And uh, you don't so have can, to be constantly monitoring that DPF filter. Right. So we, we don't have to service the DPF, but our oil change intervals are 500 hours and 750 on certain applications. Really? So we're able to extend That's those. quite expensive. Right. So 
Uh, and then plus the fact that we have better oil control, we have less, less oil consumption, so there's less cost for tap off with, with oil as well. So there's right. a, lot of, a lot of benefits with this new product and new technology that is, that's come to the table. So folks, if you're at the show, of course, they're uh, here at the show, Polar Engines are. Yeah. And uh, if you're not at the show and you want to get more information, Kohler Engines, Kohler.com? Correct. That would be it. Jeff Wilkie is here, and I'll tell you, you got to look at these new engines if you're in business and you want to meet the federal guidelines and the mandates that are all facing everyone. Appreciate you clapping by. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes, so don't go too far away.